So in this project, we'll be taking a look and wiring Regency elevator buttons. Let's go ahead and get started. So these buttons are typically found on surface mount replacement panels such as this one here. This would be a button that would replace an existing one and be lowered down to ADA height. So I have only ever seen these buttons used as call button replacements. I've never seen this style of button used on the inside of an elevator. But it is a quite interesting style and it appears to be a vandal resistant style button. So there's the outer ring here with this light up here and then the button in the middle, which has a very satisfying click to it. So as for the condition of the panel itself, there is scratches around the button, which not really gonna complain a whole lot about that. And the panel itself is a bit dirty, but that will be nice and easy to clean up and fix. So the main thing we're concerned about right now is how does this work and how can we make it light up? So turning it to the back reveals the circuitry for this button. And it's actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be, but at the same time, it's just a button and a light. So how complicated would it really need to be? This is the switch here and up here is where the light is. Now it appears that the light module or whatever bulb is missing, so I'll have to come up with something to fix that. So up here on the top, it says Regency Elevator Products Corp. This is where they're located, and there is a wiring diagram. There is the up and down, the commons, so that's just the switch, and then up LED, down LED, and positive and negative. What I do find interesting is how they show a coil for an LED instead of a diode. It's kind of interesting. So this wiring diagram is kind of useless for this project, but it's kind of cool that it's there. So for the next thing, I'm going to take this whole button apart so we can take a closer look at the different components and see the switch and the button itself. So all that's required to take this button apart is to remove the two screws and pull the contact off. And then the button itself just falls right on out. So all that's here is just a large hole. That's where the button would go. Here is the button itself. It's quite thin actually because it just sits on top there. You can see where the lens for the light is and the two screw holes to mount the switch to. And then the button itself, so it does press. There's a spring in there. And if you wanted to further remove the button, you would have to take that ring off. But I don't really see the need to do that. But this is actually quite interesting that it's just this thin piece of metal. And what it would do is press down against this contact here. And that's the switch, the very satisfying switch. So you can kind of see how that works. That would sit here. And then you'd press down against it like that. So as for the contact itself, the only real identifiable thing I could find on is a little QR code on the side. There might be a logo or something on the other end, but I'm not gonna take the whole thing off for that. So there is the common pin here for number one. Number three is normally open and number two is normally closed. These two are already bent up, so that's nice to see. But if you, for whatever reason you wanted the normally closed pin, you could lift this up and use that as well. So overall, a very, very straightforward system. So the only thing I'm missing for this is a lamp of some kind. And I'm just taking a look at this holder here, and I'm wondering if an LED might fit. So I'm thinking a red LED would look cool. So I'll just see if this will stick in there. Oh, wow, that works surprisingly well. So yeah, I will be using an LED for this, probably this red one right here actually. So all I had to do was stick an LED in there. So if you have one of these and you're missing the light, you can literally just use an LED. So that'll work great. So then what I'll do is probably solder the resistor onto one end of it and bring it over here and then solder the other end. So this will be actually a quite simple wiring job here. So I'm gonna put this thing all back together and then we'll get started with the wiring. So like I just showed before, I'm going to use this red LED, which I will slip down into here. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a AA battery pack and I need to add a 47 ohm resistor in there as well. So this will be the circuit. So I'm going to connect the positive end of my battery to the NO pin and then connect one end of the resistor to the common, connect the resistor to the positive end of the LED and then connect the negative end of the LED to the negative end of the battery pack. Really simple, straightforward circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and build that. I'll have to do a little bit of soldering to put everything together, but it should work in the end. So here is my completed circuit. So like I said here, I put the positive to the NO, I connected the resistor to the LED, and then the negative to the other end of the LED. And you can see when I press in the button, it lights up. 
So turning it back around to the front, I just did a quick wipe down of the panel. Makes it look a little bit better, though I think I could actually probably wipe it down again because I had it on the table. But the main focus here is the button. If I press the button now, you can see here it lights up nice and bright and it looks really awesome. So that was how to wire up Regency elevator buttons. Again, this is actually a pretty simple project. It would probably be a little bit easier if the included light was already there, but it looks like it's real easy to add your own light. You could add whatever color you wanted in here, as long as it's one of these larger LEDs. You can make it yellow, blue, green, white, red. If they make an LED color for it, you could put it in here. So that is pretty cool. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next project video.